Well, I'm talking with Gary Roberts, the Chief Constable, our second event of the day. This time, let me just check, yeah, handcuffs, no, handcuffs are off. That was good, by the way, wasn't yeah, it? Yeah, it was time. very good. It was good. Um, the, the cadet scheme was fantastic. Uh, there were people in the community who didn't like the idea of the police doing a cadet scheme. Uh, they thought we were wasting money. It hardly cost us a penny. Um, we've already got three young constables who've come from the scheme and have joined up uh, once they got to 1920. And the young cadets, the members of the scheme, do fantastic work in the community. And, and I love seeing them thrive, and I think it's a fantastic thing that we do. Okay. Quite, a, quite a picture which will come back to haunt you, you and the, the governor in the back of a van. Well, today they've, they've brought in well-known people from across the island. Yeah. They've arrested them with their cooperation at their workplaces, um, put them in a cell, and then they've been bailed out when people have paid up money. And that money's Excellent. going to uh, a Housing Matters charity, half of it is, and half it's going towards the Duke of, Ed Duke of Edinburgh scheme that the young people are involved mm -hmm. in. So it's brilliant stuff. And the young people themselves chose the Housing Matters charity. Wow. Let's talk about... The budget and I was quite my ears pricked up when I got uh, to see the, the details because you've been hammered over the years uh, as a department cuts have been quite I mean and you've been very diplomatic about it but clearly you've had to make do almost in, but this is suddenly extra cash was found uh, did you have to push yourself hard you know lobby hard for that or I mean what we've, we've what happened to make them give you more money we, we had our first reduction in 2008 and we had a series of reductions two big reductions in the early part of this decade um, and we've become very good at dealing with less. So we, we've actually become a, an organisation that can manage on very little, and that's been good. But there yeah, comes but did a you point, manage? Well, there comes a point where you can only manage so much. And um, we also, because we're cops, play by the rules, and the rules set at the time by the Department of Home Affairs were that we were not to make business cases for growth. Um, right. And that's why we didn't ask for more. So you couldn't go with your begging bowl? We couldn't go with the begging bowl. Um, we could make the point about how at times we were under strain and how at times we, we weren't able to meet our ambition on things like drug trafficking. Um, and politicians understood that, but very clearly what came out of the centre from the Treasury, and it was right and I understood it fully, was there's no more money so don't waste your time bidding for it. And so the, the Department of Home Affairs played by the rules and, and, and stuck within budget year in, year out. Minister Malarkey, uh, 12 months or so ago, said, well, actually, we can't go on like this. And he encouraged me and my counterpart in the Fire and Rescue Service and the prison governor to make bids. And so I locked myself in, in the room that we're in now for, for several days and, and came up with a number of bids. How near that thin blue line did you ever get? Or can you not talk about things? I mean, yeah, the point where you literally thought, we cannot. Oh, we run out of people sometimes quite frequently. Yeah. So, so um, we're doing this on Friday the 1st of March. There have been a couple of things in Castletown today, around, around the south of the island. There have been no officers to go to them, and officers from Douglas have now made their way down to Castletown. Now, that's, that's fairly normal, and that's about how we manage our demand and how we task officers to do their work. And that's manageable. And the place is still the safest place in the British Isles, but there are big things that we should be doing, and we should be doing more of, like dealing with drug trafficking, and we'll maybe talk about that in more yeah. detail later because we're doing some fantastic work on it. Uh, but we can only do what we can with the people we have. So um, last summer when I, I prepared the business cases, there was a lot of dialogue with the Treasury. We got a very positive and very uh, supportive response from the Treasury Minister, um, who was very keen to learn about difficulties in the constabulary. The Chief Minister came out on patrol with officers and spent some time in police headquarters talking to officers. And I think the message got through that we are not a service who, who complains, we're not a service who says, whoa, it's us, things are terrible. We got on with our job and did our job as best we could, but there are more things we should do to keep the place safe. Okay, did you pass the blue line at one point? Did it literally things went belly up? No, like no, you no, just no, could they, not cope with No, no, with we, the we, calls? There, 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 there are days where we struggle to cope with calls, yeah. but that's, that's, that's normal and any police service will have that. What, what's critical is we at times become a response service and that... that that is short-sighted and has implications for the future. And what I mean by that is, one of the cuts we had to make over the last decade was around neighbourhood policing. So there are fewer officers who work on things like schools, work or work in schools, work with vulnerable people, work with victims of domestic abuse, help to manage offenders in the community, manage licensed premises. Because the number of those officers were reduced, we've started to see over the last three years quite significant increases in poor behaviour by young people. Mm -hmm. We've started to see increases in violence. We've started to see an upturn in drunkenness. We've started to see more low-level drug use. 
and that's because officers have not been in the communities and they've instead been responding to things. So now the business cases that we built were around neighbourhood policing in particular, but making sure that we deal properly with drug trafficking, that we enforce the roads better, enforce the law on the roads better because our roads are not as safe as they should be, and that we deal properly with, with sexual abuse because sometimes we can have a team of five officers who've got 35 live sexual abuse investigations on the go and that's too many for a very small team to have. This is historical though, is it? So Still. Well, we, we split it into three, so the stuff that's just happened, mm -hmm. the stuff that's non-recent, which is sort of stuff that's happened uh, in the last year, and then there's the more historic stuff that's over a year old, and, and the, the two latter categories are actually where most of the demand is. And then financial crime, which seems to be this big thing that's come from almost nowhere, you, you need more resources, and you're going to get more resources for that? We will. We've had separate. We've had resources given to us in in terms of the creation of a financial intelligence unit, which was set up two three years ago, and there was a division of responsibilities so that this body um, took on some of the responsibilities that we had, which allowed my officers to deal with um, investigations, and that that body, the FIU, is now very uh, very active and is becoming successful and it's creating more and more work for us, and we've got. Um, more officers dealing with economic crime than we've had before and they've passed muster now on, on assessments from externally so the money value assessment wasn't great but we knew it wouldn't be there was really good dialogue with the government about where we see shortfalls and the government were very supportive and in the budget they've given us a bit more a bit more money to deal with some of the IT challenges around there so for example on um, one particular inquiry that we've been running for several years we were progressing through the paperwork we'd seized on warrants um, so slowly that it would take us 10 years to sift all the material that was that much, there were millions of pieces of paper, so there are technological solutions to that and they've now, the government's now given us money to, to approach it in that way. Okay. Let's talk about the, um, I was going to say morale, but it's not that, it's your, your numbers, you've lost key people, you've lost people obviously retiring, you've, you've struggled to keep some of these new recruits understand in general. Mm. People don't see it maybe as a lifelong thing anymore, Do they, are they passing through or is it just not a job for them after a while or what? Two things, the job is difficult and more difficult than it's been for a while and some people come into it, some young people in particular come into it thinking it's what they see on television and it's pretty difficult at times and it disrupts their social life and it's difficult to, to, to manage your activities around shifts and some of the work is quite relentless and you know we don't tell the public a lot of what we do but the work that we do is, is uh, often very challenging uh, and the job is difficult but secondly and this is more important I think younger people aren't joining Career, aren't taking up a career for 30, 35 years like people like, like yes, I Yes, that's the point, yeah. So they pass through, and it's not something that's peculiar to the police. The, the, the Chief Officer of the Iron Man Fire and Rescue Service, Kevin Groom, he'll say the same thing. The Prison Governor will say the same thing. And then when we look into the broader public service, that's, that's seen everywhere, that people will come and pass through, try something. If they like it, they'll stay for a bit. But if they don't, they'll go. And we've, we've done some work that suggests that we have to have people for six to seven years before we get back the investment we put in them. So we've got to, we've got to really focus on that young group. So you've got to look deeper into those candidates in the first place, have you? But to find out you know, they want to do the job, not just because it looks great on TV. It, yes, we have to do that. And there are also some challenges coming up because we are staying in step with the UK. And it's very important that we do. Police pay um, and conditions are uh, on a reciprocal basis with England and Wales. And so what constables do and how we progress and how we train and develop people has to be the same as the UK. UK is bringing in a degree programme which will require constables to have degrees. It will require people at superintendent level to have master's degrees, for example. How we achieve that in a small place is really challenging because I don't want to take people simply because they have degrees, I want to take the right people. So we're Your gene pool is so much smaller, right? Isn't yes, so? I, it, it's, it's so much smaller, but, but the best cops I've worked with, many of them have you know, left school at 16. Sure. So we've got, to, we've got to strike that balance and we've got to make sure that we, we recruit and continue to recruit the right people. How's it going getting people to come in? Because I, I, I went out on patrol sometimes with, with a guy from the Met and he was really interesting. And uh, you know, it, this is such a different culture, right, from uh, being in London. Yes, right? but it would be easy, it would be really easy for me to recruit solely from the UK. So right. in terms of um, bringing new officers to fill, um, to, to meet the challenges the budget has now given us, or to replace retiring officers, I could simply recruit all the time from the UK. UK policing is not in the best of places. Um, officers there are not getting the job satisfaction 
that they join for, they're not achieving the things they join for, they're under relentless criticism, there are fewer and fewer of them all the time, and their work is very difficult, and I could quite, could quite simply yeah. recruit all the time. So that's but the morale there. But I won't. How's your morale? My, I think my, Do you, my Would you know, good. though? Well, well, well maybe, maybe, I wouldn't, maybe, maybe you're asking the wrong person, but maybe I wouldn't, maybe I wouldn't. And what, what, what let, let, me demonstra- let me demonstrate it this way. Um, we're sitting here today, and yesterday officers took £40,000 worth of drugs off the streets. We're taking tens of thousands of pounds off the streets every month, sometimes more, 100, 100 and odd thousand pounds. We've taken a million pounds uh, in the last 12 months off one particular criminal organisation in Liverpool, that's drugs and cash and um, property. These things wouldn't happen if officers weren't positive about their work. They go on the extra mile. So, so last night there were people here till three o'clock in the morning who'd started at six o'clock the previous morning and they're back in here at eight o'clock this morning and they're doing it with a smile on their face. So that tells me that mm-hmm. thing, things are good. And the very fact that they know we're getting more money has made a, a significant difference. Fine, but will they see it because, I mean, obviously the contracts will change, the old contracts, new contracts. They want, they want to see it straight Less away. pension, yeah, or yeah, longer yeah. years of work and all but, that. But if we try to sell the job as something that's based on money, we mm-hmm. won't get the right recruits. And the police starting salary is really low, so but we're paying about twenty two thousand pounds yeah, to new recruits. Are you locked into the UK salary as well? We're locked into the UK oh, salary. Okay. I've got some discretion in terms of starting pay, so I can move the starting pay up a little bit. But we're locked into that, and so we're in an environment where there's full employment. Mm-hmm. So it's difficult to sell the organisation as something that pays well because for the first three or four years, particularly, it doesn't. So we have to make it something else. So we have to we have to find people who really really want to do it. And going back to the start of this interview, that's where the, the youth scheme comes in, because in the future that will be one of the pipelines into the constituency. Okay. Loads more to talk about. We'll have a second section with Gary Roberts, the Chief Constable.